Hello everybody and welcome back to M Cubed, Mahi's Magical Math. Today we are going to be solving the 2024 Math Kangaroo Level 3 for paper, problems 11 through 17. To see other videos in this series, just click on the playlist linked in the comments below and you can see the videos for the entire paper. Okay, let's start with problem 11. Ada built a tower of eight discs, as in the picture. Ada removes the second disc from the bottom of this tower. Then she removes the third disc from the bottom of the new tower. Then she removes the fourth disc from the bottom of the new tower. Then she removes the fifth disc from the bottom of the new tower. Which tower does Ada end up with? Okay, there is a series of events that happens here. All we've got to do is keep track of it. So first, we have this tower right here. She removes the second disc from the bottom of this tower. So this white one is gone. We'll just color it out. What's left is the new tower. Then she removes the third disc from the bottom of the new tower. So let's count. This is one, two, three. So now she removes this disc over here. Then she removes the fourth disc from the bottom of the new tower. So let's count again. One, two, three, four. Okay, she's removing this one. And finally, she removes the fifth disc from the bottom of this ending tower that we have. One, two, three, four, five. So she basically just removes the top one. What's left? So our remaining tower should have a blue disc on top, then a white disc, then an orange disc, and then a blue disc at the bottom. Out of all of these answer choices, only this one has a blue disc on top and a blue disc on the bottom. And then it satisfies the rest of our requirements too. So the answer for problem number 11 is B. On to the next one. Peter the penguin goes fishing every day and bring, brings back nine fish for his two chicks. Each day he gives five fish to the first chick he sees and four fish to the second chick. The chicks eat all the fish they get. Over the last few days, one chick ate 26 fish. How many fish did the other chick eat during those days? Okay, so basically, first of all, let's highlight important fish. He brings back, let's highlight not important fish, important details. He brings back nine fish for his two chicks. Each day he gives five fish to one, whichever one is the first one he sees. And then the other one gets four fish, because nine minus five is four. One chick, over the last few days, ate 26 fish. So let's just think about that. How are we going to figure out how many days have gone by to figure out how many fish the other chick ate? Well, another way of saying this problem is just how many groups of five and four fit into 26. So let's think about this. Five times four, five times four, so four days equals 20. Five times five equals 25. But then there's only one fish remaining and you can't just get one fish on one day. You can either get five or four. So let's try this out with four as well, getting four fish a day. So let's start with the greatest. Four times six equals 24. Well, that leaves two fish and you can't just do that. So that's not a good option. Four times five equals 20. Well, then you have six fish remaining and you can't make six with fives and fours. So that's gone. Four times four equals 16. Well, how much is remaining? 26 minus 16 is 10. Oh, you can make 10 with two fives. Five times two equals 10. And then 10 plus 16 is 26. So that means that four plus two equals six days. So this last few days part, that six days went by. On four of those days, the one chick that we've been talking about got four fish and on the other two days it got five. So we just have to flip that 
for the other chick. If the first chick, or the chick that we've been talking about this whole time, got four fish on four days, that means the other fish, the other chick, got five fish those four days. So five times four equals 20. Let's fix that real quick. Five times four equals 20. For the last two days, that fish got two times four is equal to eight. So 20 plus eight equals 28. That's the amount of fish the other uh, chick got. Okay, problem number 13. Seven cards numbered one to seven are placed in four overlapping rings. The sum of the numbers in each ring is 10. Which number is under the question mark? Okay, this problem. We really need to highlight important information. So the cards are numbered one to seven. What does that mean? None of them can repeat. No repeats. This will be important. The sum of the numbers in each ring is 10. So let's color code the rings to see this make more sense. Here's the first ring. Here's the second ring. Kind of reminds you of the Olympics, except that one has one more ring. Here's the third ring, and we'll make the last ring red. Okay, so let's fill in what we can. We know that for the yellow ring, we already have six, which means six plus four equals 10. Same here for the red ring. We already have three in the red ring, which means we need seven more to make it 10. Okay, now we're down to these middle boxes. What are we gonna do with those? Well, these two boxes in the blue circle, in the blue ring, if you may, they add up to six because six plus four will get the required sum of 10. And on the green circle, they add up to three. Since you can't have a card with a zero on it, these two numbers have to be a one and a two in some kind of order. So let's try it out. Let's try putting a two here and a one here. Well, then that means we need a four here. And you might think that works, but wait, remember, no repeats. This four is repeating. So, oops, we are going to delete that and try putting one here and two here. Well, then four plus one is five. And we need a five here to make it 10. So check it over. No repeats? No repeats. So which number's under the question mark, which is this one? The answer is A, one. Remember, with, in problems like this, it's very important to read and reread the problem. Okay, number 14. Lucas wants to make a caterpillar that has a head, a tail, and one, two, or three puzzle pieces in between. How many different caterpillars can Lucas make without flipping the pieces over? Okay, so a head, a tail, and one, two, or three pieces in between. Well, this is definitely the head. None of the other ones can be the head. And this is definitely the tail. So we have head, tail, and now we have to figure out some combination of these three pieces in the middle. Well, let's start off by pretending, okay, what if there was just one puzzle piece between the head and the tail? So we've got head and we've got tail. So you might just think, oh, the apple could be in the middle, the cherry could be in the middle, and the grape could be in the middle. Let's move on. But wait, this rectangular connecting piece will not connect in this circular piece. So the apple can't go between the head and the tail right now if we're just doing one puzzle piece between them. This cherry has a circle which connects here, and it has a rectangular piece here which connects here. So, okay, we can do a cherry. But the grape, even though it has a circular piece here, it needs a rectangle piece here, which it doesn't have. So the grape is not a good idea. So the only combination with one puzzle piece in the middle is head, cherry, and tail. 
Now let's try two puzzle pieces in the middle. So we have head, tail, and two pieces in the middle. Well, we know that the apple can't start off because of this piece over here. So let's try the cherry. If we put the cherry here, then we need a rectangular connecting piece next to it. And the apple has that. And it has a rectangle piece here for the banana as well. So we will put the apple after the cherry. Nothing else can fit there because the cherry has a rectangle connecting piece and only the apple has that. The grape could not fit there. So, okay, we tried putting the cherry first. We can't put the apple first. Let's try putting the grape first. If we put the grape first, it needs a circular connecting piece here and only the cherry has that and a rectangle piece for the banana. So, here we go. That Those are our combinations for two puzzle pieces in the middle. Now let's try three. As we figured out before, the apple cannot be first because of this thing over here. So let's try putting the cherry first. Okay, we got the cherry. Only the apple can connect to it. But oops, the apple has a rectangular connecting piece and the grape has a circular one. So this combination is not gonna work. Let's try putting the grape first. So if we put the grape first with its circular connector, then the cherry can connect to this one. And then the apple can connect here and the rectangular connecting piece here can connect to the banana. So that works. We can do grape, cherry, apple. So let's count the amount of combinations we found. This is one, this is two, three, four. So the answer is that Lucas can make four different caterpillars without flipping the pieces over. Oh, whoa, okay. Let's go to number 15. John writes the numbers one to four on a sheet of paper. Then he flips the sheet and writes the numbers five to eight as shown. After that, he cuts the sheet into four rectangular cards and puts them in a row. What is the sum of the numbers represented by the question marks? Okay, this is a relatively easy problem if you keep in mind which number corresponds to which. So let's make a table. Uh, let's put it over here. Okay, on this side, we're gonna have the numbers that are colored in with a black background. And on the other side, I'm gonna use yellow because you can't see white. So these are the yellow numbers over here. And these are the numbers with the black background. So you have one, that corresponds to, if you flip it all the way here, it corresponds to seven. Two corresponds to six. Three corresponds to eight. And four corresponds to five. So after that, he cuts the sheet into the cards and puts them in a row. What is the sum of the numbers represented by the question marks? So these question marks over here. Well, five and six are already here. So we're gonna X those off. Five is gone, six is gone. That also means that the numbers on the back sides of these cards cannot be the question mark card. So away go two and four. Now we have one, seven, three, and eight. Well, these cards over here have a black background, which means we can't even look at seven and eight, which means these numbers must be one and three, and the sum is four. The answer is B, four for question 15. Number 16, a floor is covered with two kinds of tiles, the, the rectangle one and the square one. The size of the rectangles is 23 centimeters by 11 centimeters. The picture shows a part of the floor. How long is one side of the square tiles? So in problems like this, I just start labeling and I'll do it in green to make it easier. So the rectangles, these over here, 
are 23 by 11. So the long side is 23, the short side is 11. Well, let's take a rectangle in the middle, right here, this one. So one side, this side is 23. Ooh, let's make that a little smaller. This side is 23, and this side is 11. Okay, well, we have that. How is that going to help us? Well, we want to find the squares. And I see that these squares share a border with our rectangle. So let's keep going with this. This side over here of the rectangle on top of this rectangle is 11. Aha! Now we have something. 23 minus 11 is the space that these two squares are taking up. 23 minus 11 is 12, but that's not the answer. You have to divide this by two because there are two little black squares. That is six. One side of the square tiles is six centimeters and all sides are equal, so you got that going for you. Okay, now here's 17, the first five mark question. A student has three cards with numbers on them. Their sum is 782. Unfortunately, a worm ate part of each card. What is the sum of the three missing digits? Wow, I didn't know worms ate that much. But anyway, so let's highlight some important information. There are three cards, we can see them, with numbers on them. Their sum is 782. So these are three digit numbers whose sum is 782. The worm ate parts of each card. These digits are missing over here. So there's one, so there's the tens digit missing here, tens digit missing here, and the ones digit missing here. What is the sum of the three missing digits? Okay, well, let's look at this. And we'll do it in blue this time. So the sum of the ones digits, three, four, and this mystery number, has to end in two to make the um, sum 782. So three plus four, three plus four equals seven. Seven plus five equals 12. And 12 has that ones digit of two. So one of our mystery numbers is five. Let's look at the other, let's look at the tens place because the hundreds place is already filled out. So we have mystery number, mystery number, and one. Ooh. And we want the required sum is eight. So eight minus one, that's seven. And we don't actually have to find out these individual numbers. You know why? Because they're asking for the sum of the three missing digits. Whatever these individual numbers are, they can be four and three, six and one, we never know. Their sum is seven. And we have the ones digit here too. Seven plus five is 12 and that's the answer. Remember, you don't always have to find everything out. There are shortcuts to these type of problems. Great job, and I'll see you in the next video.